Hello everyone, I'm Sujata Tantaluri, Senior Solutions Architect with AWS and with me I have Maya Haley who is also Solutions Architect with AWS and we both support federal civilian customers. Today we are going to talk about how to integrate QA Bot on AWS with ServiceNow. QA Bot on AWS is an open source solution that is built using AWS native services like Amazon Lex, AWS Lambda and Amazon OpenSearch, among others. You can deploy the solution as a chatbot on your IT web page. And it can then answer some frequently asked questions and triage some simple IT issues. However, if you want to escalate to humans, and that is what we are going to show you, you can integrate with ServiceNow, create incidents with description. First, let's see the demo uh, presented by Maya, and then I'll walk through the changes that you need to make. With that, I hand over to Mai. I will now demonstrate the capabilities of Q&A Bot on AWS with ServiceNow integration, as shown in the architecture. The chatbot is deployed on any tech company's internal web page. As we can see here on the left side, the chatbot is deployed and ready to provide assistance. On the right side, we have ServiceNow already populated with incident tickets and ready to receive new tickets. So an example or a scenario that an organization might come across is if an end user is interested in Amazon Lex and they want some more information about it. So they would type in, I want to learn about Amazon Lex. Can you give me some information about it? Q&A bot will then provide a video and some links to some resources that an end user can use to take them to uh, another website to get some more information about Amazon Lex. A user also might need instructions to install command line interface to make uh, API calls and we'll ask some follow-up questions around that. Um, so they can also type, I want to install CLI to make API call. Can you give me instructions? Q&A bot understands that user is requesting help installing software and will provide answers from a knowledge bank. Users can follow those instructions and install the software. Using this chatbot, real-time support is being provided to customers based on the knowledge retrieved using Amazon Open Search Service. To begin with a chatbot, you can uh, install or embed a sample plugin to your website to get your chatbot installed. Going back to the chatbot, Another use case that someone might have is maybe they're installing their software, but they get locked out accidentally. Their password isn't working, for example. If they can access the chatbot on the IT website, they can ask, looks like I locked my password. How do I reset this? Q&A bot will provide those instruc instructions for the end user to reset their password and access their web, uh, internal websites as well. If that doesn't work for the end user, they might need to escalate to a real agent. ServiceNow uh, integration has already been set up, so we can use that integration and leverage it to create a ticket directly from the chatbot with ease. Simply, the end user can type a command like please create a ticket. Q&A bot might need some additional information about what is being asked. It might need a description of the problem to send to ServiceNow. I need to reset my password.
Q&A bot has processed this request. It's provided a ticket, a ticket number for ServiceNow. To confirm this, we can search for the ServiceNow ticket number. And we have found that ticket number, incident 10146, with a short description of the issue, I need to reset my password, submitted by John Doe. With this information, the support team can follow up with John Doe on the incident that they are experiencing. Thank you, Maya. Now let's see what changes we have to make in QA bot on AWS. First, we'll start with Lambda. You're seeing my AWS Management Console. I've created Lambda. Uh, it is a runtime environment 18.x, Node.js 18.x. Uh, when I created it, I created it in from scratch. It created an index.js file. I have updated it to renamed it to index.mjs. You can take the code, which is in the, uh, we have written a blog, the description, in the description, you should see the link to that blog. That uh, blog has the code. You can take that code, paste it into this browser and hit deploy. That should deploy the code, uh, Lambda code. Now you need to make changes to the environment. You can see here, it is using ServiceNow host. This is the variable I'm talking about, service now host, and then service now username. When you created, uh, if you are already have an instance, you should have that val values, uh, take that. Otherwise, if you are using developer instance as stated in the blog, take that. Going to the configuration pages, use the, in the environment variable, just use the same, uh, the same names as service now host and service now user. Populate the values from your instance and that should uh, configure your environment variables. You still need the password. The password is in your secrets manager. So you need to create a secret manager uh, and the, the secret name should be service now slash password. But if you are giving some other name, make sure you update the code, right? Um, the secrets, once you create that secrets, uh, it, the AWS Lambda needs to now fetch the password from the secrets. So it needs permissions. Um, the permissions will be given to uh, going to the configuration page, going to the permissions, and there is a role. The permissions are given to this role to uh, fetch the secrets from the uh, secrets manager. So once you click on this, this page will take you into IAM page for that role where you can create an inline policy uh, giving permissions to the secrets manager. The policy is also given in the block. Take it. Just up, make sure to update the resource on. The resource on should be that of the newly created secrets manager. You need to make that change. Once you save that policy, Lambda will now have access to the secrets manager. So these are changes from the Lambda perspective. Let's see one other thing that I wanted to bring up is this one uses, uh, so when you're creating a service now ticket, you want to know who has uh, created ticket, what is the uh, issue that we are talking about. So the, the description of the incident will be provided by the user. The chatbot will ask the user to give the description which it will use to populate the incident. At the same time, when the user is logged in, it takes that user name from that uh, logged in session and uses that to uh, populate the caller ID. So you can see here, caller ID is the user name and the short description is the description that is provided by the user. So where do you provide that, right? So let's go back into our content designer. It says, please create a ticket. It is actually asking first for what is your, uh, please, give me a short description of your problem. So this is what is giving you the problem statement. The user is asking user to provide the uh, description of the incident. And when the user types in the description and hits enter, this uh, Q&A on chatbot will take that value, put it into this session attribute. 
so, uh, short underscore description and then it will pass it on to uh, it is of the type Q&A uh, uh, free text so this is a response board built in response board which will store free text um, and then it will execute document chaining rule if you see this it's in the format QID QID is nothing but question ID of item 002 so it's going to pass it on to item 002 for execution and let's go and see what item 002 is item 002 will take that uh, value passed on and it will execute lambda here so it is executing the lambda and hence uh, that is when our lambda will be called and uh, you can uh, th that that in turn will take that description the user id and then we'll create an incident uh, using a http call, uh, api call right so that's the integration if you want detailed steps you can see you can look at our blog it has very detailed steps um, but yeah enjoy integrating with service now until next time thank you